Hello friends, it's Trevor, it's Avery, it's Pat, it's the Citywide Special. The Phillies go 5-2 and two on their home stand and drop 2-3 of three in Atlanta. Ranger Suarez is set to make his return Saturday in Kansas City. Can the Phillies finish the season strong ahead of the playoffs? The Eagles trade for wide receiver Jahan Dotson. Tight end CJ Uzoma is released. Jalen Hurts is finally intercepted at training camp, ending a historic streak. The Birds continue their preseason against the Vikings on Saturday. Flyers training camp is starting soon. Goalie prospect Alexei Kolosov has requested to return to the KHL for another season. However, the team wants him to stay in North America. The Flyers also look to terminate the contract of Ryan Johansson for an alleged material breach. What does that even mean? The Sixers signed Vre- uh, French Olympic standout Gershon Yabousse <laughs> oh, <laughs> to a vet minimum contract. With the roster seemingly complete, how are we feeling about Daryl Morey's busy offseason? All that and more coming up right now. How's it going, fellas? Pretty good. Another good day in South Philly. It's beautiful weather out. We got a little nibble of fall upon us here, which is nice. Yeah, we're in fake fall season. So, it's yeah, it's, you know, get all crazy here geez. now. Don't get all to that stiff nip season yet, but we're out here. It's, it's cool out. No ACs on at night, which has been kind of nice. But, yeah, man, yeah, feeling pretty good. Open. Yeah, windows open. Listening to the regular crackheads of Snyder and Broad <laughs> coming down the street yeah, again. Yeah. So, all is right with the world. But, yeah, man, it's good to be back again for another week. Yeah, episode 75. That's three quarters of the way to 100. Yeah. That, that's yeah, pretty good. Way, I, I, yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. That's yeah, shrinking, buddy. Cheers. Yep. So, yeah, it's good to be back. Weather is nice, as Pat said. I dare say this is my favorite time of year. It's still summer, but you get some of those cool days mixed in. You get those cool nights. You get those stoop nights. You know what I'm saying? A stoop beer hits different when you're not sweating your balls off because you yeah, don't want to be oh, in the house, you know? Yeah, I can't wait tomorrow. I'm getting done work at 3. Yeah. Doing some uh, prep for the old seafood Sunday. Sun doesn't go down still to around 8. Yeah, you know, perfect. quarter to eight, it's so it's perfect. still beautiful out. Mm-hmm. It is People just seem happier. The smell of the city is a little bit, you it's know, more smell. at bay. It's not as hot, yeah. so it doesn't. The city doesn't smell as the, rank. The, the, the piss, piss smell doesn't piss rise into the air as much. Better when it's not much. ninety-five degrees out. When it's seventy-five, you're like, damn, I don't mind smelling this right now because it's nice and kind of dormant. Yeah, the roaches so aren't out as much either. Mm-hmm. The roaches yeah, don't yeah, like yeah. the chillier weather. When mm-hmm. I was walking here. There's Except this, these flies have been retreating back into my house. Well, like, yeah, oof. the flies in the bathroom yeah. over there. Yeah. Oh, the as soon as I walk bitch. in, I hear bzz, 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 bzz. I didn't see those right I had there. a couple of flies in my house today, too, actually. They yeah, must yeah. have snuck in when I was taking the trash out. Back. Back. Would. Now, we got mosquitoes, though. We've had mosquitoes the last week or two. Yeah, I've had those for most there of the like summer. A, yeah. I had a fucking cricket in my... I think it was a cricket was in my house. A little my Jiminy kitchen. cricket whispering yeah. in sleep? Yeah, Butchie got it, though. Oh, nice. Yeah, Butchie doesn't play. That's yeah, what I'm yeah. saying. Let her in that bathroom. She'll tear them flies apart. Yeah. yeah. Mika's past her prime. She's, she'll point at where it's coming from. We're like, yeah, we could do that too. We know where it's coming from, but we need, you know, get up in there. Nah, she's yeah, past her prime that way. But yeah, can't complain. Some interesting news for the birds. Phillies are pretty much where we thought they'd be. But, you know, other than that, can't complain. We're back in here. I'll be off next week. I'll be up in Maine. Yeah, yeah, you'll be chilling. Yep. What are you looking forward to most? Probably have, just eating. Have some you been to Maine? Lobsters? I've not been to Maine. Yeah, no. Maine's D E E. Probably just eating decent. a bunch of lobster. Yeah, Maine's pretty cool. Eat a bunch of seafood. Very scenic. They have that uh, yeah. anti-billboard rule there. No mm. billboards. Very nice. Oh, that's the thing. Yeah, you ever notice that? You drive through Maine. There's no billboards. That's I'm a good point. That. Good for Maine. Look out the window. See all them trees. Yeah, trees, the, 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 uh, the moose, the meese. Yeah, the meese. The meese. It's, it's, the what's, meese. Is pl- what's plural of moose? I think it? that's I think it's a just part moose. of a great debate of there's no set. Uh, it's moose and moose. Moose and moose goose, eye? It's goose and geese, but it's moose and just moose. Yeah, it'd be str- yeah I don't Which think... I guess maybe because you don't really ever see multiple. Yeah, they don't travel in packs. Yeah, they're, they're very kinda... like solitary animals. So maybe that's a thing. Like yeah. goose, you see Lone a lot of geese. Soldiers. You never really see a bunch of Mm-mm. geese. Enough to make it that emphasis of a plural word. Hmm. I but, don't know. You know, I don't know. Drink you ever some seen good... a moose? Not in real life. I don't think I have either. Mm-hmm. No. Never, Never been any of those. 
moose region. I've been to Maine a few times, but I never seen a moose. I saw some video yesterday. Of, I guess there was some guy out in Alaska, and he just like walks into his garage. There's just like a moose just straight up chilling in his garage. Kind of, they're pretty aggressive though. They're like a big, 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 big as hell, dude. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're enormous. Yeah. yeah. I've seen a door. I've seen Can't deer. Can't fuck with no moose. Yeah. I ain't never arrested a moose. They're pretty aggressive, I, I hear. And no one ever talks about eating moose. Uh, I've, I've had I've had elk before. Yeah, but that's not a moose. What's, what's, the, what's the difference there? What exactly is not I think a moose is bigger. What is... A moose a, is way bigger. Well, the elk is a male deer, Elk right? is pretty much... Well, it's like a reindeer. Well, you got yeah. elk and you have... A moose is just a completely different... I think a moose is even Let's larger see. than an elk. They're like... They're Let's huge. Yeah, I know, the, I know the moose are bigger. Difference... They probably are a lot more like, uh, you know, people don't really eat bear meat because it's real muscular and gamey moose. that way. Yeah. Oh, I hear her bear is good. Mm. Moose and elk. Like the kind of the kind bear's of bear. okay. What the, this doesn't tell me what the difference is. They're both large mammals in North America and Central and East Asia. Look at the size several difference, though. Moose are typically larger than elk with bull moose standing six, seven feet tall <laughs> at the shoulder and weighing over a thousand t- pounds. Damn. While bull elk are usually four to five feet tall and weigh under or weigh around six hundred pounds. That's it's, six that's, six feet tall at the shoulders. Their head's yeah. another two or three feet with Yo, the if neck. If a moose stood yeah. on its and hind legs, the antlers. if a moose stood on its hind legs, dude, twelve foot, it'd, it'd be, be like fourteen feet. It'd be like a mammoth. Yeah, see, you can't fuck with a moose. Mm-mm. What they, else we got? This ain't Rocky and Bullwinkle. This thing will tear your ass up. I think the biggest difference is the size. There are other differences. Mooses are usually sol or no moose. I guess the plural is just moose. Yeah, yeah. I think moose sure are usually moose. solitary except for mothers and they're young and during migrating season or mating season. Elk tend to travel in groups and migrate seasonally. So yeah, moose are solitary. Elk travel in herds, kind of like deer. Elk got them fuzzy little antlers though. I think that's a thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's cute. Elk have large spreading antlers that grow backwards. Moose have large flat palmate antlers that grow out from the sides. Palmate, it gets like the, it gets like that little meaty patch. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. But they're territorial. Yeah, I've never had moose. Then I've had elk. Uh, elk was all right. It was chewy. It was gamey. It was good. Moose deer. Yeah. I mean, deer I've are good. I've had like venison before. Mm-hmm. Just oh, venison's banging, dude. Yeah, that's pretty fun. That's a top tier meat. I still have a lot of chip steak in the freezer, and some probably back straps, like fillets. Yeah. What venison fillets? Mm-hmm. Nice. They're small though, like yeah, they get a little, you little know, medallions. Yeah, but they're good though, you know. But yeah, yeah. Well, that's the uh, National Geographic segment for the it, day. You're welcome, everybody. Yeah. Is it? The more do you we, know. Do we have anything else? I think that's <laughs> it. Other that's, animal news. Mm-hmm. That's anything? that's it for now. No. Yeah. Well, I already of, I already gave the roach report. Yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of animals, then I guess the bird would be the next one up. The birds make a move today. Yeah. On yeah. Kind of Big unprovoked. Move. They Big heard move. me complain. They heard me complaining about yeah. the wide receiver three for thirty solved. minutes last week. We called it out last week. We almost went forty five minutes on that back and forth <laughs> yeah, for wide that, receiver that three. That was but long. Maybe how we listened and was like, you know what? I gotta help these guys out over here in this basement of South Philly and pick up a good wide receiver three. And I think he made a great move. I mean, that's fantastic yeah. to give up pretty much. I mean, draft picks to me, especially past the fifth round, are like. A crapshoot anyway. So you give up two seventh rounds. Okay, a third round. That's fine. Third. But we have two. You got a fifth year, back so or a have... third back, and you got a previously you got first a round one pick. pick. Yeah. yeah. So I'll take that. And he's only in his third year, twenty five yeah. years old. Yeah, he's still on his rookie deal for two more years, and not a lot of wear and tear given the team that he's been on. Yeah. Like he hasn't been, a, you know, doing twelve hundred yards a year and all this shit. He's pretty young. Went to Penn State. Common theme here. We got. Two Penn Staters from interdivisional teams. We just need one more. Yo, he's kind of from here. Jersey. Nazareth. No. Nazareth. Oh, Nazareth. You ever been in? I've been in Nazareth. I, I got thought Nazareth was I re- <laughs> your story about Nazareth. Yeah, I got arrested in Nazareth. Nazareth. <laughs> Have I, I told that on the pod before. I, I don't think so. When I blew a point two zero in the breathalyzer when I was 17. <laughs> Damn. I never told this story. I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh. I've I've heard this story yeah, before. But you weren't a part of this. I wasn't there. There no. were several people who were a part of this. But yeah, Nazareth, Pennsylvania, man. So yeah, I was 17, a senior in high school. And um, the band I was in at the time, we linked up with this other band from Easton, Pennsylvania. They're like, yo, next time you all come out, you got to play our buddy's house show in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. So we're like, all right, yeah, can our friends' bands play? They're like, yeah. So we get a whole, we called it a thrash caravan, dude. 
it was like seven cars all just back to back caravan from South Jersey out to Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Dean was driving. I was in the passenger seat. I filled a Wawa iced tea up with a fifth of whiskey. <laughs> and when I'm 17, Classic man, move. I mean, I, similar color, you know? It's yeah. A, yeah. It that's that's kind of works. A trick. But yeah, I mean, I couldn't drink like that now if my life depended on it. If you oh, gave me a that. fifth of whiskey and said, drink it in two hours or you die. I would just lay down and die right there on the spot. That's a lot of liquor. But when I was 17, I was just slurping like the Lord wasn't looking, dude. And I had to play a show that night. <laughs> so then we get there. And as soon as we roll up to this dude's driveway, it's like middle of nowhere. There's like, it's dark. I don't know what the hell's across the street. There's like farmlands or whatever, trees, woods. I don't know. Across the street and these crackheads or these junkies. I shouldn't say crackheads. They were probably dope heads. I digress. They come out of the, the woods or whatever. Like, yo, can we get some beers, man? Can we hang out with y'all? We're like, nah, man, get lost. We got a show to play. Leave us alone. So then they, they took exception to that. So then, like, of the seven cars that caravaned up, like, four made it. Three must have got lost. So the four of us that make it go down, like, start setting up, playing the show or whatever. And, like, first band plays, and I'm hammered. I'm falling all over the basement. It's a, it's a bad scene. <laughs> I'm like, damn, I got to play a show after this. So then uh, first band plays, the junkies must have called the cops because then my band's set to play. We're warming up. I'm like so drunk, I'm passing out on the drum set. I'm <laughs> dropping drumsticks and in between trying to pick them up, I'm falling over and passing out. As soon as we play our first note, the cops show up. Damn. So we're thinking, we're used to parties around South Jersey, right? Yeah. Where, you know, like the cops come, like South Jersey, Philly. The cops have better things to worry yeah. about than... Keep the noise down, just yeah. don't do anything stupid. They have better things to worry about mm -hmm. than 30 kids in in a party. Out there in Nazareth, they really didn't. Don't you know, they breathalyzed each and every one of us. Damn. 30 of us, probably 40 of us in this house. While they were breathalyzing us, the other three cars that got lost showed up. They seen <laughs> the cops... They just turned around and went home. <laughs> so they drove two hours just to see the cops. Yeah. Nice little drive. Outside. So then, like, it starts to become a game, man. We're just like, all right. We're all, like, 17, 18, drunk. We're like, just say, yeah, let's see you can blow the highest. Let's see you can blow the highest. So, like, they breathalyze me. I'm hammered. And I blow a .20. They're like, hold on. They, they, let's register. Is that right? They asked me to blow again. Point too well. They're like, damn, he's he's drunk. But don't you know someone blew higher than me? Damn. Dave, rest in peace, Dave. Uh his brother was there, Alex. Alex, you might be listening. Shout out to you. And uh Alex blew even higher. He blew like a point two five. <laughs> but it was so funny, like we would <laughs> this was so funny. It's like we're a bunch of dumb seventeen year olds or whatever. So each time someone like blows and gets their number, they get their citation, they go in the living room and wait. And every time someone would come in, it's like, you know, when you do a test in like middle school or high school, it's like, what'd you get on the test? Mm -hmm. It's like, I got a 98. It was like that. What'd you, what'd you blow? I blew a 0.17. I blew a 0.12. I blew a 0.20. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's my story about Nazareth, Pennsylvania. That's where Jahan Dotson went yeah, to high school, yeah. dude. I'm just so saying it's a good from town, here. produces good people. Yeah. Well, it that's does. why I went to Penn State. That <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. yeah. It's a good transition to Penn State. You know, people getting buck, getting wasted it's up there. So town. that's good. Yeah. 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 But, but now I like the move. I think he's probably the best wide receiver three we've had since at least Aguilar. Yeah. For sure. Right? Like, yeah. Who, think of the Eagles' recent ride with receiver, wide receiver threes. It was Quez, Quez. Watkins. Alameda, Zacchaeus. I don't even know who it was before then. Couldn't even really name yeah. past that. I mean, yeah. you're going back to like the Travis Fulgham era. Like, yeah. Which we who, had that and he was like the wide receiver. Oh, uh, <laughs> Greg Ward. Greg oh, Ward. Yeah. How did we forget? Yeah, he was the he's the best one since Greg Ward. I th I think he's better than Greg Ward. But I think he's the best one. Greg since Ward was yeah. reliable. I don't, I don't know if we're saying Aguilar was not a number three. He was a number two. Nah, this 2017 season, he was a slot receiver. He was the number three. It was Alshon, Torrey Smith, and him. Uh, no, Torrey Smith was a slot. Nah, nah, Aguilar was a slot that year, I, sw mm -hmm. I swear. All right. But either way, like, the point being, 
wide receiver three has been a weak spot on the Eagles for a long time. I don't Definitely. think it really is no more. They were testing out Brenton Covey out there. It's like this man can't return punts, kickoffs, and also do, you know. Yeah, he's small. He's going to get killed. Yeah. Yeah. So I like it. I mean, he produced well for Washington as well. You know, almost 1,000 yards the last two seasons. 10 or 11 touchdowns blew us up last year for five catches, 100 plus yards and a touchdown. His best so, game of his career. Yeah. So I'll take it. I mean, the guy's a, a player and he hasn't really had a quarterback to really show what he can do since getting drafted. I mean, he's a first round pick, not for nothing. And he had glimpses of that throughout his career in Washington. But look at that franchise. Yeah. Like, and no one would survive in that place. You're going to see the same thing, not in the same caliber, but looking at it too with Malik neighbors, you're like, Dave, you got Daniel Jones. Like, what? Your first round pick. Yeah, I feel bad for him. It's just like you're kind of stuck with, yeah. you know, not the same caliber of athlete at all, but the same sense of you're a first round draft pick. The franchise put a lot into your into that pick, and they give you Daniel Jones. They give you fucking Heineke to throw to you. Like they're not giving you what you have been yeah. used to at college Wh- and all that. Wentz when he was washed. Right. Yeah. Now you go from that to Hertz, and the pressure's off. It was him and McLaurin really. You know, maybe Curtis Samuel too here and there, but now you got AJ Brown, Devontae Smith. Ain't nobody gonna give. It. Yeah, you know, you get a linebacker on you at best, probably maybe a maybe a nickel or linebacker anything like or the that. occasional safety. Yeah, but you're gonna be you're gonna have a pretty good year, I bet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you figure Goddard's gonna take some pressure yep. off him too, and Saquon coming out of the backfield. I mean, and it should take pressure off a of Goddard too. Yeah, it should make life easier on everyone. Yeah, yeah. In theory, right? Because you figure. Him and Goddard over the middle and Saquon coming out of the backfield. Yeah. Linebackers and safeties are going to be on edge. That means they won't be able to double on the, the, the corners as much with Devontae and AJ. Yep. I mean, it just makes the offense that much more dangerous. And to get a guy with a first-round pedigree for a you know, third-round pick, you don't really want to give that up. But the upside that you have here, Mame, it's well worth it. I mean, for a third-round pick, essentially that way, you give a third-round pick for a first-round pedigree – it, it, that year that that third round pick would come around to be able to find a diamond in the rough in the third round to get that would is really unlikely. Yeah. So I love it. He's 25 years old. Hasn't really had a lot of wear and tear in the NFL at all because they're not making deep playoff runs. He hasn't really been used a whole lot. But he's still been very productive. Touchdowns don't lie. The fact that he's had 10 touchdowns the last two years, yeah. that's not bad. He had four and seven. For playing yeah. against, you know, not for nothing, but playing against the Eagles defense twice a year, Dallas' defense twice a year. So he still produces and does well interdivisionally. So I'll take that. Yeah. Yes. And also, I mean, you know, I mean, people might say, well, the how how important really is the wide receiver three position? But you look at the past two years, how many games have we pretty much lost because of some fuck right. up of Quaggers Watkins? That's what I was saying you last I mean? week. Yeah. Wide receiver three is a big deal. Like sometimes you need that guy to come through. Especially with, you know, God forbid an injury happens or, you know, teams get pretty complacent in how they operate and, you have that extra weapon. Yeah. Now, to your point too, Avery, like you got Saquon out there, you got AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard. You can't double team everybody or cover everybody. And to have a short handed person that could take it to the house every time, yeah. you're good to go. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, we've been pretty lucky the past couple of seasons with uh you know, the health of AJ and Devontae. They haven't really missed that much time. Other than so, that playoff game. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But so you figure at some point, something's probably going to happen. You know, it can't they- go too good. We can't have back to back. I mean, we went from a stretch of having no one thousand yard receiver to back to back years of two receivers having a thousand plus yards. Yeah, we've been pretty fortunate in our Eagles receiver health. Uh, we don't obviously wish that upon anybody and expect that, but it's just the name of the game of how football's played. Yeah, it's good to have that insurance policy. It's better to have him out there. I'd trust him at two and Devontae at one. As opposed to Quez Watkins at two and Devontae. Oh, and then you're absolutely. like, all right, well, fuck, yeah. this is it. Yeah. That's it. But, yeah, great move. Harry Rosen, once again, doing his thing. I mean, I don't know what more he has to do to prove that he's the best GM in the league, honestly. Did you see that one, uh, that, like, um, rapper from D.C.? I forget what his name was, but he was on Twitter being like. Wale? Uh, yeah, I think yeah. so, yeah. yeah. He was like, <laughs> they need to, someone needs to do a RICO investigation <laughs> on the Eagles. They're doing something illegal over <laughs> yeah. there. Hey, it's just good cat management. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's good. It's good exploitation of the rules set in front of you. Yeah. Yep. Nothing wrong with that. More GMs need to get smart, dude. Yep. But like, nah. I'm sorry. Nah, no, you're no, good. No, Go no. ahead. Like I said, you got two out of three divisions right now. You got two or three teams. I mean, you got the Giants pick right there with Saquon. 
picked off one from Washington. We'll see how that pans out next year. I mean, only one other team to poach from, and that'd be Dallas. And there's another, the trifecta of Penn State interdivisional players to pick off a of teams. I don't know. Micah Parsons yeah. might want to come Micah Parsons here. come home. Yeah. He, he wants to play here so bad. You see him at Sixers games oh, yeah. wearing he, his maxi jersey, all excited about the Sixers. And he only didn't want to come here originally. Obviously, he got drafted, so we couldn't really help that. But he's like, I needed some time away from PA anyway. Like, I've from this area i went to penn state like i want to go out and explore the world or whatever went to dallas he's like i'm out i'm ready to roll now he's down there in dallas where jerry don't want to pay anyone dude. nobody jerry doesn't want to pay cd lamb mm -hmm. he doesn't want to pay dak he doesn't want to pay parsons the cowboys in a couple of years if jerry doesn't start just giving them the money man those guys are all out the cowboys yeah. are gonna they be, gonna be bad. pretty bad yeah. yeah well you can see that in the trey lance pickup last year that's like a you know not that he's that much younger than uh, Dak, but that's a running on the wall where if they don't go that far this year, I'm guaranteeing you Dak's out of here. Trey Lance is going to take that helm of I'm going to be a Dallas's quarterback, and they'll just fucking beat be him to the ground dude. too. I'm not saying it's the right move, but it'll be like uh, that, that is what it is. I can't even remember the Cowboys that one quarterback they had's name before Romo. Before Romo, Quincy Carter. This is a guy that had like was a high pick, high pedigree, and was just ass because, like, they didn't build around him. It's going to be the same thing. It's just, That's taking it back, like, 20 years. They don't but operate yeah. as a team like that. But the Eagles are in a good spot. And they got money. I mean, they're – everybody else in that offense is locked up for the next three or four years, so their core is built there. I'm pumped. Yeah. But great move by Howie in a random week. I'll take it. And what else we got to say about the Eagles? Oh. We didn't. I guess we didn't talk about this too much last week because the game was going on. What do you think of Tanner McKee being the backup? I think he he's earned it. I, I think, think he they deserves need to give it. it to him. Yeah, I don't think they're going to, but they should. I don't know what else he needs to do. I mean, in the limited time that he's allowed to play, he's clearly he been so much better. He's clearly been the number two guy. And even if you look at like Pittsburgh Steelers, like Reddit's and all this shit, when they're like, "Well, let's just see," like people have been watching. A little bit of to see if maybe they let go of uh, Pickett for the wrong reason or whatever the fuck his name is, and they're like, "Oh my god, this is such a great move!" Like we're they're happy to just get rid of him because he's not good. Yeah, I mean, I feel like they're gonna go into the season with Pickett as the you know proclaimed number two you know, backup or whatever. But if you know, God forbid, if Hertz goes down with an an injury and misses extended time, I feel like. Pickett's gonna have a pretty short leash, and it's gonna be like if you don't, if he doesn't do very well, it's like okay, we're gonna throw him a Tanner in here, and that's yeah. that. So I feel like they're, it's almost like they're not gonna make it a controversy. Well, it doesn't need to be, you know, as long as Hurts is healthy, it's like whatever. Uh, Pickett's number two, whatever. But yeah, if it if it actually comes down to mattering, then I think uh, they'll they'll wise up pretty quick. The biggest tell for me is that like you have a. Not a seasoned vet, but you have a veteran quarterback. I mean, he's been in the league now, but this will be his third year. Right? Yeah, he's, he's not a rookie. Yeah. Right. He had a whole year pretty much starting for Pittsburgh. He started for two seasons. And yeah. you can't even yeah. get through preseason without hitting 50 yards. If yeah. That, like per I mean, game. Per game is what dude, I'm saying. So, like, you, you put him in, in the mindset of Tanner McKee's been putting up 100 plus yards almost every start, and he's getting fewer snaps than Pickett did. You figure if you're going to trust anybody with your number ones, if you can't get any product or anything out of your number twos and threes like that as a leader or as a smart quarterback, you're eating up sacks in preseason. You're throwing the ball away or just making terrible reads in preseason. How am I going to trust you to play? I, yeah, any one of us could throw to A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. They're not asking for that. They want to see, can you step up there in this moment when, like, you're playing with arguably the worst set you could de be dealt with against guys that are aggressive on the defensive end trying to make a name for themselves. McKee's been out there throwing dimes, and granted, guys have been making plays, but he's putting people in play to make that shot for themselves. I and think Pickett, he's just, he didn't do anything right. Small think, hands. Yeah. I think guys are probably too more, small. more willing to make a play for McKee. Yeah, well, because he's, yeah. he's not going to, yeah. he's not airing him out in the middle he's of the field. He's giving them a better chance. Out. Yeah. And also, like, we don't see any of the things that go on in practice. We just see what we see on the preseason games. But, like, in practice, I'm sure McKee's, like, his presence, like, have you seen him speak in front of the mic? Very He calm, just has cool. really good presence, yeah. just really chill, laid back. 
You know, he speaks Portuguese. You seen that? Yeah. Uh, yeah Which they probably yeah. love compared to listening to the Hurts all day. They're like, can we just get like yeah, a regular... Yeah, he has such regular... personality. <laughs> yeah. That dude's probably a good guy in the locker room. Whereas like Hurts is stoic and like kind of monotone. Kenny Pickett, probably just happy to be there. Right. Whereas like McKee is happy to be there. But he's like, nah, these are my guys, dude. I don't know. I like McKee a lot. I think he should be the backup. In a lot of ways, I feel like his game kind of reminds me of Foles, just a statuesque, tall, too, a lanky bit. quarterback yeah. that isn't super athletic but gets the ball out on time, and the guys love him. Yep. That's what you need in a backup. That's all you want. They got to plug and play. Your quarterback goes down, he can let it rip. And like I said, with guys that you have built around that, with A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Goddard, now Jahan, you don't need a fucking – doctor yeah. back there get yeah, you the don't... key let that man loosen up the arm let that shit rip call it a day so here's the deal right this is like i don't think i'm the first one to theorize this but it's set certainly something that the eagles i think probably place an emphasis on whether they tell the fans or the media or not so you think about last year mariota was kind of he could run a facsimile of the same offense hurts runs with zone mm-hmm. reads the rpos read option quarterback keepers in theory to tush push I mean, Kenny Pickett's kind of cut from the same cloth where he's a scrambling quarterback. In theory, he can run a lot of these RPOs, zone reads, read options, QB draws, quarterback scramble plays. We've seen him try to run the tush push to to Can't mediocre results at yeah. best. But I think what they focus on a lot is, yeah, we need to be able to run a facsimile of the Hurts offense. No, you don't. You have A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Saquon, Jahan Dotson now. And you got a creative MC as right. well. Yeah, like you don't need to run the same offense. Mm-hmm. The guy that needs to be the backup quarterback is the guy that gets the ball out on time to your weapons. That's all I'm saying, man. But I think they're just so sold on, yeah, if Hurts goes down, we need to make sure the offense doesn't change that much. Yeah. Here's something. Don't build the offense around Hurts running so much. I mean, I understand, like, you have to build that into it. But at the same time, with these weapons, you could have – I, I was going to say Peyton Manning, but Peyton Manning would do really well in any offense. You could have Ty Detmer back there. <laughs> with these weapons, Ty Detmer is going to be throwing dimes, dude. Ty, yeah. Ty Detmer would get 30 TDs in a 16-game season with yeah. these weapons. Ty Detmer. I didn't even say Coy Detmer. I went way I was, back to the I know, 90s. I, was I like, said Damn, Ty Detmer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, between that and the uh, the old whoever that was you're talking about in the Cowboys. You're, oh, you're Quincy in, Carter? You're yeah. in 90s. Bro. Yeah, I'm, I'm throwing it back, dude. Yeah. Throwback Thursday. Hashtag TBT. Represent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, do we have anything else on the Eagles? They play preseason game number yeah. three. At home against Minnesota. Which, that team's been in shambles all offseason with injuries and shit like that, yeah. so it'll be all right. But first first look at live Eagles football at home at the link. Are you going? No, I won't be there. I'll be in Maine. Uh, no, uh, you, I thought you said you leave Sunday. Yeah, but Saturday... I'm not, my parents aren't going, I'm not, oh, it's preseason okay. too, like I don't, you know. Yeah, I mean, especially a third preseason game. You know, they'll have some starters probably for a series, I would think, just to knock some rust off, but uh, I don't, preseason not really for me like that. I'll recharge up, get the batteries right for regular season, you know what I mean, but yeah, Minnesota, they should do what they want to do, I don't know, it doesn't it's really matter pre-season. to me. It does, yeah. I'll tell you what does matter, Cooper to Gene. Yeah. Cooper DeGene's playing a game. He's he's going to play. Uh, yeah. I'm excited Probably to see what see he looks him. like. Yep. So we'll see him out there. But, yeah, it's another good shot for the young guys to be out there, make the, make a name for themselves. The receiver core that had a pretty good game against uh, New England. You think uh, Dotson plays at all? No. I don't think there's any Probably need for not. that. No, there's no need for that. I mean, you don't make a trade and then put him in there. That's true. He's, if, he's he, been, if he gets hurt the yeah, first game, that's, <laughs> that's just that's, stupid. That defeats the purpose yeah, of making a trade. Fucked up. That's so, fair. Call it a day. I think that you, again, might see – not a whole lot of stars on offense. Defense could use it again just to probably more for conditioning than anything else and schematics. I think that, again, this offense is pretty much the same. The defense has changed uh, personnel-wise and coordinator, where the offense, the personnel has pretty much been the same, just new plays, but they're all seasoned vets. They're all smart. Uh, they should be good to go that way. So I'm not I'm not worried about that. You got a guy from Alabama. You got Tennessee with, you know, with A.J. Brown. He's good to go that way. So I'm not... I'm not worried about him fitting into the scheme of 
Kellen Moore. Yeah. But I the mean, defense just needs to be able to get conditioned, know the plays. You got a lot of free agents in there, a lot of old guys, a lot of guys that you're moving around. Bradbury playing safety, rookies in there on the secondary. So Bradbury's washed, dude. Yeah. He a couple missed tackles again against New England, but that's kind of his his shtick. He out. He definitely so out. He does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so we'll see. Good to be having football back at the link though in South Philly. I'll take that. Yeah, yeah, good to be having football back. Good to be having fantasy football back. Yeah, how about that? First round, first pick? Yeah, Hold who, up now. who'd you pick? McCaffrey. Had to go for oh, it. Oh, I had the second pick. I picked Brees Hall. I couldn't trust the receiver. That's right, I, I didn't, yeah. I don't want to, I don't, I don't know. Plus, I mean, I don't trust Tua, so I can't, it's like a half and half. Tariq, you don't trust Tua while you drafted him at quarterback. In the seventh round, I'll take him, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna draft Tariq Hill. No, I know. I, with the I first you. pick, I you know what I mean? Or C.D. Lamb, who's. I don't who know. Knows? Yeah. I don't even, MIA. Who knows what he's gonna do? So I'm not trusting any of that. I know of tried and true McCaffrey. I mean, McCaffrey led me to the championship in my one league last year, and you can never go wrong with him. But yeah, I was kind of the same boat. I was like, damn, I could take Tyreek Hill because I was number two. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, yeah. Mm. Then there's also just so few good running backs, good fantasy running backs. I was like, oh, I'm going RB heavy. I want the, you ever, y'all like follow these like foot fantasy football like strategies. There's the zero RB. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or there's the hero RB where you just stack up on running backs. That's what I did. I went the hero RB route. We'll see. Time will tell if it pays off. But. From Flacco to Flaccid, we'll rise again, dude. <laughs> we'll go from Flaccid to Flacco. I got to change my name, actually. Yeah, he's with the Colts now. Flacco. I don't know. I yeah, is he still so. playing? Yeah, I I know he came back last year, and I guess he still is playing. I think he's with the Colts, but I could be wrong. He's going to be damn near forty. I know he's older than yeah, us whatever. by a couple Keep years. Keep getting that paycheck. Cash yeah. them checks, dude. <laughs> Team CTC, as Shield Capadia would say. But yeah. uh. All right. Yeah, I don't really have nothing else. Yeah, what else we got here? Done. We could go to. Uh, yeah, let's talk about the Flyers. Yo. Yeah, the, the some Flyers had an interesting week. Some interesting little th- things. Never, never a dull moment, even in the off season yeah. with this fucking weird team. So what do we have? Uh, Kolosov wants to go back to the KHL. Yeah, but the the thing with that is the Flyers don't need to agree to that though, right? Yeah, yeah he's they can under do whatever con- they want. Yeah, I mean they didn't have to do that last year. But it was just like, you know, it was kind of a log jam with all the goalies. And they're like, yeah, whatever. Go back there for another year. But this year, they really want him here. And you figure that makes sense, like, for his development. Like, you know, the rink's a different size, a different style of play. You don't want a guy just – you can't expect the guy just be in the KHL forever and then just come over and just be ready to play in, uh, you know, the NHL mm-hmm. or whatever. But, yeah, I guess – I don't know. I guess he just really hated <laughs> Lehigh Valley. <laughs> Uh, for the he, two weeks he was here, he should go hang out with uh, Nazareth. That's in Lehigh. Yeah, yeah, that's should, in Lehigh yeah, County. That's we, yeah, we should get in contact with Danny Briere and tell him, like, yo, you guys got to take our boy to Nazareth, show him a good time there. Yeah, yeah, go hang out with the junkies and the drug addicts and the drunks <laughs> yeah. in Nazareth, man. Yeah, yeah. He might feel like he's back. It's like, nah, but I shouldn't say that. I know for the t- at the time being, he is on the Flyers, uh, you know, I guess training camp roster, so. They do expect him to be here, and, and he can't really, like, you know, you know. I mean, I guess on the one hand, you could be like, is it really that important? Do you want to just yeah, not? It's just the principle of it kind of annoys yeah. me. Yeah, but... is this sort of like, I don't know, man. Maybe it's just like uh, the, like, boomer side of me, but it's just like, come on. Like, you can't just be That's making for sure. any sort of demands. That's for sure what it is. You're just a prospect yeah. or whatever. And, and it's also – between this and then the going back to the Gauthier thing, it's like this is kind of happening again, even though it's not really the same sort of situations. But, yeah, it's, again, it's kind of just, you know, kind of getting tired of these, like, players that haven't really proven anything, trying to uh, make demand. And it's like, buddy, like, you, we drafted you. It's these like, goddamn be- Zoomers, dude. I know. Because that's the thing is, like, I feel like, I feel like a lot of people are – Flyers fans are – putting this on the fires front office and it's like, mm-hmm. Oh, what is, what's wrong with them? With why are they having these disconnects with all these prospects? And I'm like, this is going on all around the league. Like there's been a lot of guys that are kind of, you know, prospects that are demanding this and that. And it's just like, I don't know, man, these fucking youngins, dude, yeah, these the fucking new generation, zoomers, these dude. entitled, 
just want handouts. Yeah, it's just like, I want to go home. Yeah. I miss my family, or however you would say that in Belarus. <laughs> but, uh, no, I mean, I, I get it from his perspective. Like, yeah, it sucks to, like, come over like end yeah. up in I'm Lehigh sure it's Valley, hard, but it's like like I don't the know. phantoms don't have so anyone that speaks your language like you're not in the nhl probably just living in an apartment by yourself that's probably boring as hell but then conversely at the same time like you got drafted you signed a contract like honor it right like i don't think either side's wrong i think both sides are right at the end of the day for the flyers it would suck for him to go back home because this is like Probably our best goalie prospect. No disrespect to Arison or Fedotov and or Zavragin. I think that's how you say his name. Something like that. Yeah, I think that's. About but yeah, Kolasov was enough. the one we were most excited about, mm. which is not ideal. At the same time, the Flyers are rebuilding, so it's not like we're relying on Kolasov to do anything. It's just. Yeah, it's just you don't want to keep bleeding prospects like this after you just lost. Yeah, you lost your, a first round pick. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. For, for Drysdale, who the jury's still very much out on. Yeah. I mean, I was going to ask you how you feel about a dry steel, but we'll have plenty of time, I guess, to talk yeah, about that. Yeah, maybe closer to the season we can do a deeper dive into that. But, um, yeah, so there's that. It looks like, I mean, yeah, he's going to have to show up. I don't think he can't really – he can't just not show up if yeah. they don't agree to something. Maybe maybe after training camp they decide to work something out, I guess, depending on how all that goes. But um, I mean, It's going to be yeah. interesting to see, like – if they work something out, I guess that's probably the Flyers just saying, yeah, you can go home, right? Yeah. Pretty I mean, much, yeah. Because he's seeking a loan. Could... And that's what they did last season. Well, I mean, because the thing that sucks is that he's already on his ELC. Right, yeah, so they're, bur- already they're already burning ELC. Yeah. They, they burned one year of his ELC last year, which was fine because it was like, you know, like we were saying, it was kind of a – there just wasn't really room for him or whatever. But this year they want him to play for the Phantoms. So, in the event he goes back to the KHL, can the Flyers somehow garnish any of this EL? I guess not. I don't think there's Yeah, NHL contracts are guaranteed. So, yeah, I guess they couldn't. Yeah, I don't think there's anything they can really do there. Damn. But, um, yeah. Fuck them Russians, dude. <laughs> uh, well, he's from Belarus. He's Belarus. not Russian. So fuck yeah. them Belarusians. <laughs> <laughs> All the same to me. Look at you put a belt in front of that shit. doesn't change. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Eastern, oh, they're all Eastern European. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, you're Eastern European, too, so. If he was a Yuki, he'd be loyal, though. I'll tell you what. He'd be here. He'd be doing the hard work. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Be, well, that's a up, problem. He'd be up there in the Northeast chilling. Well, yeah, exactly. That's, that's, they wouldn't that's, that's why they need to bring the family back to Go to the fucking to Russian spa. Get a little fucking rub down, call it they a day. They don't have that in Lehigh Valley. They don't yeah. have no Russian oh, spas they, there. They, trust me. He got to figure it out. Got to stop being a big old puss. You know, it's just stupid shit. You know what I mean? You came back to, you're in America, <laughs> settle down, enjoy, go to fucking Hershey Park or whatever you got to do to fucking have a good time and relax. What are you going to do back in the go Belarus? What are you going to do? Nothing. Oh, they probably got some. Yeah, he probably has plenty of friends no, and family got... there, dude. Stop. Nah. Was he playing for Minsk? How I old think? is this guy? Where's Kolsov's, what, 20? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. I think he's 20. He got to fucking nut up real quick. He'll be all right. I mean, he'll be fine. Like I said, I kind of agree with you, but also can see where he's coming from too. At the end of the day, he signed a contract that's guaranteed, and that contract means that he should be playing for the team. Something tells me he didn't read that shit then. Yeah, maybe he didn't have anyone translate. Like I'm sure he had someone translate it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but um, yeah. So and then there's this Ryan Johansson thing. Yeah, this with the hidden injury or the fake injury, yeah. a material breach. Mm-hmm. Material when I breach. saw that that tweet, I was like, "What the hell the does that, that even it's mean?" Weird legalese. Yeah. yeah. So I guess the story here is that they wanted to. I guess they waived him. He cleared waivers. Then he was going to send him down to the AHL, and he obviously doesn't want to do that. So he's pretty much uh, what I guess the Flyers are accusing him of um, is that he basically embellished an injury to be like, oh, I can't go because you can't like they can't send him down if he's injured. Yeah, well, welcome so, to America's healthcare, right there, baby. <laughs> it's all about finding a doctor friend to sign you off for some shit. Yep. That's all, right. that's all it is. He got caught. Yeah, 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 he found, found the wrong yeah. doc. He went to the wrong doctor. <laughs> he got caught. Yeah, yeah. He got got. But I guess the thing is, he, you know, this is just coming up a lot later than it would, you know, if he had generally had this injury the whole time, and it's like, well, why didn't you get, you get this taken care it's of? Really, yeah, it came up thing. at the end of the season. Yeah. yeah. So, 
Yeah, it'll be an interesting little thing. They'll probably come to some kind of settlement or whatever. Yeah, I was but... reading. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, you go ahead. I was reading about it a lot. And, like, this situation doesn't happen in the NHL very often. But when it does, like, usually they come to agreement where the player gets to walk away with some money and the team gets some sort of, like, cap benefit mm-hmm. from it. It's probably what's going to happen here. But at the same time, man, just, again, it's just the principle of it. So, yeah, you got traded. And yeah, he got traded from Colorado because, yeah, he was making good money and was pretty butt for Colorado. And they were like, yeah, you're just taking up cap space. So you get traded to the Flyers. It's not like the Flyers didn't try to trade him. I remember we sat here on the pod the day the trade happened or the week the trade happened. And the Flyers were like, yeah, we want to do something that benefits him and benefits us. And they tried to trade him. No one wanted yeah, his ass. No takers. So then they put him on waivers. He cleared waivers. They tried everything in their power to make this dude happy. Yeah. And the fact that they couldn't, now he's pissed at them. It's like, nah, man, that's life sometimes. You're 32 years. You're 32 years old. You're a grown ass man. You just have to deal with it. Like, I understand going to the minors when you're 32 is probably feels like a slap in the face. For all intents and purposes, he's kind of washed. Yeah. I mean,. That's that's it, dude. That's that's when the reality it's the path hits. You chose, dog. Yeah, that's you it. either yeah, you got to go there and just be miserable with with Kolasov in yeah. the High Valley. <laughs> They're both sitting there like, man, we gotta get out of this place. Well, Kolasov's yeah. probably yeah. speaking to him in what that what do they speak in Belarus? Probably Russian. Yeah, Kolasov's speak yeah. probably speaking to him in <laughs> Russian. Belarus, is Belarusian a language? I don't know. I don't think so. I think they speak Belarus? Russian there. They probably speak mm-hmm. Russian. They probably speak a few different languages, Ukrainian but Russian's probably Russian the primary too. language. I would, what, I would think they probably speak Russian. Or it's very I'm pretty sure they do. Or it's very it's like intertwined a, of like, you know It's probably a specific dialect of Russian. If you're like from Belarus, Belarus, you probably speak Belarusian. But if you probably grew up at this guy, what, twenty years old, probably speaks a broken Okay, there is, there is Belarusian, that's a language. The official language of uh, Belarus are uh, Belarusian and Russian. So they're it's, probably yeah, similar. It's a blended, it's so a there's blended probably thing. a lot of yeah. people who speak both. Yeah, it's probably like it, Italian and Portuguese, right? Like the similar. Mm, I guess those Italian aren't that, and Portuguese. Those aren't well, that similar. You mean Spanish and Portuguese? Spanish and Portuguese aren't that similar either, though. It's I guess a big not. split. That's why Brazil. Well, I, anyway, whatever the fuck. Yeah. Brazil's got to be different. Yeah. I don't know. They're similar. But my point being is the Johansson thing is just. It's kind of a slap in the face. The Flyers have every right to be annoyed by it, dude. Yeah. Just, hey, they tried everything they could to do right by you. And they couldn't because they couldn't. You're pen- trying to penalize them. It's like, nah, man. Like, just deal with having to go to the minors. Your career is over. You're 32. You're washed. People don't want you in the locker room. And that's that. Yeah. I mean, father just time comes right. Go to the he... AHL and kill yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, go live in Lehigh Valley. He's like, I'm in Lehigh. Lehigh sucks, and no one speaks anything that I can speak. Yo, so he, this is even more ass. He needs to go to Nazareth and do some drugs, dude. Yeah. yeah. That's what he needs to do. But now I think, I mean, this, I don't want to say it kind of sucks for the Flyers because he was a center and they need centers, but. He's, he was a fourth line center at this point yeah. in his career. It's not from a roster standpoint, it's not that big of a deal. And if they can get some cap space relief for all this, then go for it. it just kind of annoys me. What do you make of his agent being like a big time hockey agent? You think that's Who, uh, uh, Kurt, what's this guy's name? Overhort? Uh, something Overhort? Like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. Well, he's like the Scott Boris of hockey or something. Yeah, or like the Drew Rosenhaus or uh, the, what do you call it? The dude that's married to Adele. Yeah, what's his name? I don't know. He's uh, Maxie's agent, Rich Paul. Oh, yeah. Rich Paul, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean. I don't think that much of it. Yeah. I mean, the Sixers went through the whole Ben Simmons saga. And while Maxie was still a Rich Paul client the whole time, and the Mac turned around and gave Maxie a Max deal, and Rich Paul was at the museum saying that's the best thing he's ever seen a team do for a player, right? The Sixers went or the Eagles went through the whole T.O. thing with Drew Rosenhaus. Plenty of other Drew Rosenhaus yeah. clients signed with us after that. I don't think that that's big of a deal. Yeah, especially it's in the NHL. Too much I feel like that, too. You know, they don't really have too many. Yeah, the NHL has the least drama of any yeah. sport, other than the Flyers. They have plenty of drama. Yeah. Well, it's just, I think, the Philadelphia yeah, Association. It really it. is just Philadelphia yeah. sports, man. It really is just, yeah. we Never always have drama in all four we sports. We can't go wrong, we'll go wrong, especially when it comes down to 
dramatics in sports. Hold up. What Philly sports team is the least dramatic? The least? Probably the Phillies. Union? <laughs> well, well, the Union. I don't, I don't if count. If we're counting them, all right, just the big well, yeah, four. The Union haven't been around and been Football, through enough baseball, ups and basketball, downs. Football, hockey, the big four then. All right. Yeah. I would say. I mean, definitely not the Flyers. Definitely not the Sixers. They're the most. No, absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. The least I mean, the Probably Eagles the... haven't been very dramatic for a while. Well, no, no that's not no, true. No, There's no, all the with Wentz and Sirianni. 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 Yeah, okay. Probably so the it's Phillies. the Phillies. It yeah, is the, the Phillies. Phillies. Yeah. Even though we're very unhappy with them, which we'll The only dramatic we'll thing to talk to. about the Phillies is like who – I think like, part of that is because that it's not a salary cap league. There's less dramas created Also, they've been way. paying their – like with the Phillies. You can you just know? throw money at problems yeah. in baseball. It's more dramatic about like, well, who do we want to bring into Philly now? That's also, about it. There's no like locker room shit or yeah. anything else that way. I also feel like baseball players in general are the least dramatic. We were dramatic with that meatball for a minute, the meathead, who's now in San Fran. Gabe Kapler. That was pretty dramatic. That era. is true. That was a very dramatic. <laughs> that is era. true. Never. Yeah, baseball players can be dramatic. Yeah. The Phillies just haven't been. Yeah, they were extremely dramatic very when dramatic. he was here. Yeah, bringing mm-hmm. a Hobie Milner in the first game yeah. when he hasn't even warmed up yet. He was just subbing guys left to right, put changing yeah. up the lineup. Le- Team was it getting was... mad at him when Carlos Santana smashed the Xbox. Mm-hmm. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was dram- mm. Even the Phillies, for baseball not being that dramatic of a sport, even the Phillies have their moments. Mm-hmm. Harper's Athens. dramatic as hell. Well, the players are, but the organization as a whole, I yeah, think, is not dramatic. Yeah, the dramatic. Phillies are pretty well run at this point. They're That's good true. to go. Yeah. They might have a little flare period in there, but it's not like, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, Eagles had that shit last year, even into this year a little bit. Yeah, with this whole Sirianni Sixers, Hurts thing. definitely dramatic. Yeah, the Sixers have been dramatic mm-hmm. since 2013, dude. Mm-hmm. The most dramatic team in the NBA, and the NBA is a dramatic league. Yeah. And then the Flyers, I mean, there's been plenty of the Flyers stuff. Gautier, Kolosov, this Johansson story. What else we got? Um, like- Poroff when he was being all anti-gay. Mm, oh yeah, shit! Yeah. The Flyers have always had some drama, dude. I love dramatic, but Carter Hart. A bit no, that dramatic. is dramatic. Yeah, That's yeah, extremely yeah. dramatic. It's traumatic and dramatic. Yeah, that's yeah. both. Yeah, the Flyers have always had some mm-hmm. pile yeah. going on. Never normal. Hey, I mean, that's yeah. Philly sports. It's why it's, it's it gives us things to talk yeah, about. We're sitting here. <laughs> On a podcast it's our bread and butter, baby. at the end of August, talking Flyers hockey on a 20-minute segment. Team yeah. content, dude. I'll Dramatic, take it. Baby. I'll take the drama. I love the drama. Yeah. Well, speaking of drama, then, Phillies lose yeah, again. The Phillies. Yeah, we can talk about the Phillies. Ugh. As we said last week, it would take, what did we say? It would have taken a sweep. A sweep of the Nats. Or a really convincing three out of four against yeah. the Nats, which I think we got the convincing three out of four. I think we did that. But we I have was... not come up at all with the Braves here. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. We yeah, just I mean, went back one, down. The one win had to be a come from behind win. And bats still just, they just look, uh, don't and look good. And the loss was deflating too. The first loss was just bad. I don't even remember that game. Oh, when Alvarado what, walked, four in, guys like, walked four in a run. runs. Yeah. That was some little league bullshit. Yeah, that was. Ugh. That's like when you're playing in fucking middle school and like you only play six innings and the mercy rules in effect and the backup pitcher then walks the next five guys. You're like, well, this is boring. No one's doing shit in the outfield. They're just walking around the bases. Bad. Yeah, no. I mean, after that national series, I was trying to convince myself I was back back on the Phillies. Mm-mm. I was sort of low key back on them. Nope. But then as soon as they as soon as that Brave series started, I was like, if they lose this series, I'm back off. Never mm. was convinced because we're supposed to beat bad teams. So yeah, you win three out of four against the Nats. You did it convincingly for a few of those games. I'll take that. But they have not proven themselves against decent teams. And as many injuries as the Braves may have, they're getting healthier than we are waking up in that sense and it's not looking great we were seven games ahead i think to start today's game now we're back down to what six yeah, we're i back, guess we're because back down to six it's a game of, but this is the time and where we still play them again my point though is that this is a time where it doesn't matter if you beat the nats up bad or not but the braves you got to i mean that's a whole three games you could have went boom 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 went right up ahead yeah. and you went one out of three and it doesn't get easier after that you got kansas city next then you have houston Houston's been playing good ball. And then you have the Braves again. Yeah. Like, this is not a – I don't know. I mean, 
it's just a lot of weird things. Even Thompson now resting guys when you could have put him in there for a sub hit and stuff like that for some other wins. Oh, just yeah, to when ahead. he did that on Sunday. Yeah, it's just not – I don't know. I'm still at like a six worried. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, it doesn't feel good. I mean, it's definitely starting to – you know, I feel like when this whole big slump first started, there was – these comparisons to this past Eagle season, and it kind of seemed kind of like, oh, okay, I mean, come mm-hmm. on, it's not going to be like that. But now it's like, ah, is it, is it, is it going to be like that? <laughs> yeah, it's starting to feel it's like that. It's kind of starting to feel bit, like man. it, yeah. You got one hit going to the sixth inning, you're like, I don't, I don't know about this team right here. I mean, I'm not saying I don't know about the team in general, but it doesn't look great. No. And your August is closing up, so okay, they had a bad August, but you only have yeah, you one, only more. Have one more. Yeah, we're running out of time like, to write the ship. Yeah, you here. had a you terrible need, July. You need, you need your one through four hitter to wake up in the next month. That just seems like a lot of pressure to put on everybody, and you can see that they're feeling it because when they strike out, even in the second inning, Stott struck out in the second inning and slammed his bat down. It's like all right, he man. Like up, but yeah, yeah. Either way, yeah, it's like yeah. you're not. The world, the sky's not falling. You have all game left, but now that you just showed them that that's where your head's at, you're that's that's a bad mindset to be at. So a lot of them are like that, dude. I got all these stats pulled up for all these guys. We're talking. So overall, the offense since the All Star game, nineteenth in the league in home runs, seventeenth in runs, seventeenth in slugging percentage. And then if we want to look at individuals, let's start with. We'll go lowest to highest. Wet Brandon, Oof. since the All Star break, is batting 173. He's got a 233 OBP, a 309 slug, a 542 OPS. Next up, we have Bryce Harper, a 202 batting average since the All Star break, a 252 OBP, a 378 slug, a 630 OPS. Then we got Trey, 218. 254, 336 slug for a 590 OPS. Stott, Oof. your boy. Trevor's, Whoa. that's Trevor's boy. Don't be looking that's at my, me with that not shit. My yeah, boy. That's, that's Trevor's not boy. 221, 247, 349, 596. Still not good. <laughs> Since when? When is this from? Since the All Star game. Look at which so is this not is, a small sample size like at this point. All Star game was a while ago. Yeah. yeah. Look at August's numbers though. Stats at below two. He's so, at sub one ninety. <laughs> but that my point is, it's been this way for a long. Yeah. T- it's we're not talking a month. We're talking almost two months. Yeah. JT two twenty eight. His three twenty two OBP is pretty good. Yeah. Three oh four slug. Six twenty six OPS. You want to know the one guy that's been raking? Casty. Well, Rojas? Casty has been too, but Rojas. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> this cracked me up when I was shit, looking yeah. at the stats. So Rojas sitting three oh two since the All Star break, three fifty one OB a three fifty one OBP for him. His slug's only three fifty eight. Yeah. He's not he's the he's never, been, he's never been the big guy like that. But but it's just wild to think like half the offense has just been a slump, a, an extended slump since the All Star break. And not break. just half; it's the Wrong half yeah, to be in a slump. Right. Like if it's, 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 if it's Rojas, Weston Wilson, who's been raking, but if it's like Rojas, Weston Wilson, I don't know, Stott, in the, let's just say Real Muto, you can probably survive it. But yeah. it's Harper, Schwarber, Trey. Like, yeah, you can't really survive that. I'm okay with them losing games and playing like shit. I'm all right with that. But don't show the. You want to talk about people being dramatic in sports i think that like you start showing in the second inning you put a pop fly up you just had three hits in the first inning or one hit in the walk and whatever it turned per- turned out to be you don't want to show that to the other team and they have been so dramatic the last couple of series whether it's against the nationals or against the marlins or against you know the braves right now it, you know you strike out you put a pop fly up all right you're good to go it's First, second, third inning, no big deal. When it's the bottom of the eighth and you do that, okay, I get that. Then you're frustrated. You didn't win the game. It's yeah, okay. It's bad body language. But you do in that right away. That is just bad mode. It just puts the whole shtick against the whole team. And you're seeing that now. One hit in six to seven innings Yeah. with this team, it's just, I can't put my head around it. It's terrible. No, nah, everything's bad. The bullpen's been bad. Alvarado, we were <sighs> talking about him. Terrible. NBC Sports Philly posted this after his latest meltdown. 
his stats since the All-Star break. He's pitched in 11 and a third innings. He's got a 1.75 walks hits per innings pitched. 10 strikeouts, 8 walks in 11 and a third innings. Yeah. A 635 ERA. That's yeah, a problem. The other bad. bullpen guys haven't been better. I have their stats too, but what? I'll spare everyone the details. It's not good. At this point, he's just been kind of overweight and kind of a fat slob on the mound, to be honest with you. He's act- out here looking like he's CC the Bathia, but he's not a fucking Cy Young Award winner. The dude's trash right now. He's playing like a fucking dump truck piece of garbage is what he is right now. <laughs> and he's built like that too. <laughs> He should have been out there running laps around the so field. So what, are you fat shaming him? I'm saying, he's not, I'm, saying he's, I'm saying he's not in shape is all I'm saying. He clearly I mean, can't. was a problem before. He's always been a he, big husky man. But, and he I'm to, not, but he used to be sure. able to throw strikes. He used to be husky true. and throw strikes, but he did say to me in the season, he goes, you know what, I eat a lot of candy and I'm a little big. He said that at the top of the season. That's not me saying that. It's his own words. So I'm not eating shit. He's eating his own words, literally, and yeah. more so. I mean, so it's I like think, I think that if he, he was needs... throwing strikes and getting people out, be like, yeah, eat them skittles, man. Like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> like, but you can joke fuck. about you can joke but... about being out of shape to start the season if you're still throwing fucking ace, you know, dimes all the time. Yeah, but you come into the think, season. I mean, I don't think it has anything to do with his. I think mentally, yeah, I think it does Maybe. a little bit because if you're supposed to be an athlete, you know what I mean. Pitchers don't have to hit anymore. They're not running around bases. They're just sitting there. Doing their thing. I'm cool with yeah. that. Well, relief hitters never had to run around. Whatever. All I'm saying, though, is that he ain't doing shit. Make that man run a lap or two here. Maybe it won't hurt. Uh, I don't like it. I, I don't think he's bad. I'm not bad. knocking his body. He's a beautiful man. I don't think man. he's bad That's because fine. he's fat. I'm sure he still can do whatever he wants outside of baseball. But at the same time, pff, yo, mm-mm. Yeah, I don't. I don't think my man is bad because he's fat. I just think that's being a relief pitcher. And right now, that I mean. Yeah, I didn't see his fat he's out of shape. For mm-hmm. an athlete, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Say he was fat. I mean, I'm saying he's overweight. Yeah, he is. But at the same time, like, as a relief pitcher, that's just the volatility of the position, right? Like, I'm trying to pull up his baseball reference page because before the Phillies got him, he was bad. So, yeah. Let's see. When did we trade for him? The year before we got him, his last full season, 2020, he barely pitched, but not a lot of guys pitch in 2020. 2019, in 35 games, he was 1-6 with a 480 ERA. His whip was 1.87. He had 8.1 walks per nine. Well, so this what, is five the five years ago at this point? But still, that's the volatility of being a relief pitcher. Sometimes you're on, sometimes you're off. I, I can't really fall them for that too much, like... The, the, what the bad. issue is is that Topper keeps putting him out there. Yeah, at Wait, this point, it's you can't. You just. I mean, I can kind of understand the idea of this guy's been one of our best relief pitchers for the past couple years, and if we want to make a run in the playoffs, we got to get this guy right. But maybe the time to put him out there is not in these high leverage situations, you know. Which I mean. I guess they haven't really they haven't really had comfortable leads in a whole lot of games lately no. where you can put a guy out for like a little like you know just get some work in sort of garbage duty knock but, the rust off call it a day but um yeah so it's just tough like I like I don't know when are you gonna get him that work well at the same time it won't get be- like so then to your point so we practice him out we get him to be comfortable against these big leads but then you know like we said before we only have a month left before we hit October. So you, he's it's only get more stressful as the year goes on. So if he can't do it now, when it's we have a seven game lead against the Braves, and you can't come in here and do your job now to just get us an eight game lead, and you're breaking and crumbling with four walks, how, what, the room for that practice is by gone now. You I had mean. the chance all year to do that. If he ain't got the smoke, he ain't got the smoke. And whether it's he's not feeling right or he's got maybe the yips or whatever it is, every game he's going to come into now is going to have meaning, whether or not he likes it or not, or if that's on Rob or not. Yeah, no, I mean... I mean, it, it you, just is you, what it you is. You ain't wrong, but, like, if the offense could build... This is a big ask right now of this offense, but if they can build some six or seven run leads, you can bring him in for him to at least get the feel of throwing strikes and getting outs again, then, you know, like, you start to build confidence like anything else. Like, when you started playing saxophone... It's probably like, yeah, the first couple of times, it's like, oh, I can't play this. 
then you started playing it in front of like maybe your parents. Then the next time you played in front of like your music teacher, then like after that, you're like, oh yeah, I'm ready for the concert. It's kind of the same thing. It builds up over time. Yeah, I never hit a slump though. That that's what you think. <laughs> you never had. That's what you think. A couple never, weeks where it's like. <laughs> yeah, I never I never got the gift of that though. Yeah, you bring yeah. Clarence Clemens out there. You wasn't no Clarence Clemens. <laughs> I did not say that. I was not any Clarence Clemens. That's not, uh, that's not then me. That, my point being is, over time, his confidence can build up, and it's not going to if you keep putting him out here. These two, one run and two run games against division rivals, letting him walk in four guys. Like after he walks in the first two and gives up a hit, like you have that three batter rule now. That's yeah. it. Don't let him face a fourth yeah. guy and walk him too. Yeah, don't you don't, you, yeah, you don't want him to just leave him out there to fucking die. That's just as, you know. That's cruel. I think the common theme that we've been saying since really two weeks ago now, too, is that what can go wrong will go wrong, but everything has gone wrong again. Another week has gone by where the bats are quiet. They might have had a little uptick against the Nats. That's fine, but that's a shitty team, and they did what they had to do at home, so whatever. At the same time, it's like, you know, who's going to be the one to step up here and, and get us back on the right track? We haven't really had that convincing game against anybody in my mind in the last month that's been like, wow, here we go. We're turning the page. They're just There was in this... the one game against the Naps, but that doesn't count. Yeah. No, they're in this like limbo purgatory period of like, well, we snuck out a game last night, but then we lose the game tonight real close. It's like there's no quite convinc And one, again... One hit for six innings. No one's stepping up. No one's hitting the ball. No one's making contact, making a it play. Was pathetic. Eight strikeouts, nine strikeouts for that starter went out. So it's just you know it's de- it's defeating, and I'm sh- the locker room is showing it, and the team is starting to show that too. They're getting very emotional about every strikeout, pop fly, whatever it is, double play. They just have that bad look to them that they have to break, and I don't know if they can do it in this next series coming up or whatnot, but they gotta get this shit right sooner than later because it's not looking good and yeah. you got teams chopping on the bit i mean yeah the dodgers are ahead of them by like game and a half the brewers are game and a half yeah. back or a game back after we lost so yeah it's not looking great but maybe they can get together not I'm, they uh, all need to get it like, it's, saying, like, it's not I'm, like it's not like the bats have to yeah. work out i mean sanchez all for not for nothing he sanchez had a great game good. Today. yeah yeah you but give him three runs in most games you right. should win you gave him a great first inning and we're like all right fine we're looking good like you know top of the first we got a run in we're good to go and then you went mia for more than half the game the yeah, man I mean, pitched 70 some pitches looked great all day today a couple so- errors in third base, you know. I well, mean, that's Weston Wilson never plays third, which I'm just saying, Topper giving Bo- just- Boehm a day off in the yeah. rubber match of a crucial series, a team you're three and six against. Probably not the smartest move. Top but- to bottom, the whole team seems a little foggy right now. Meh. Still at a six and worrisome. I think I'm higher than that. I was down to a four at my lowest, I was a four. Well, I, well, I forget what I said I was last yeah, I week. I think last week I went, I went from four to four and a half. And I, I think might I, be at a five now. I think I was at a six last week. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm almost to a seven, man. Because you do not want to play a, climbing. You do not want to play a wild card series, especially the way this team's playing right now. No. And if you have someone like the Diamondbacks coming in, or who else could it be? I don't know who else it would be. The Diamondbacks are the only team. It's no, not going to be anyone in the Central. It could be the Mets. They've mm-hmm. been playing better ball. Mm-hmm. could be the Braves, who were three and six against. Yeah. Nah, I want no part of that, but that's kind of where they're headed. But I don't know. I don't really want to belabor the point. The Phillies are bad. It's not fun. Maybe they can get it right in Kansas City. Probably not. We'll see where we stand. Yeah. They better get, get it right that. for the game we're at on Monday. Yeah. You got to go to Kansas City, get some of that. Kansas City barbecue. Ooh. Get some ribs. That'll set them right. I hope. Uh, so you want to touch a little <laughs> bit on the on the uh, the Sixers? There's the only thing I had to say is Gershon Ubisell. He's a baller, dude. Yeah, I mean, that's Soccer. pretty much the only real news. Yeah, you man. Know? Soccer Blue. He's dude. over here now. Uh-huh. He dunked on LeBron. We lost Batum and we yeah, got dude. him. Yeah, he's thick Batum. Yeah, with more hair. <laughs> yeah. 6'8", yeah. 260, that's a husky yeah. man. He's got a big... Is this the French National Anthem? Yeah. yeah. 
Tokyo back here. This is a French Canadian last name back there. That's my people. Yeah. That's my people. Yes, we got yeah. We got one French guy out, one French guy in. You got to have one French guy. So and This guy's got a dump it's truck. It's actually kind of a big deal. Embiid needs someone he can speak French to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess. <laughs> I think that's a big deal. And you can he can talk in his native tongue secret. to other people yeah. on the team. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's great. It's good for probably, you know, on the court and, you know, yeah. saying some shit. Plus, man, he feels a, a role. Like, they needed a power forward. Yeah, yeah, Think yeah. About, they have all these guards, all these wings, and mm-hmm. all these centers. They didn't have a power forward. You get a guy that comes in. That dunked on LeBron and was low key probably going to be the MVP of the Olympics. Definitely, Brian that high at least. Like he's not like he's just playing in Euroleague. He's got that high of, you know, interna- he was nice inter- in Euroleague. Inter- international clout, you know, on the back of his shoulder here. He's got to be like, oh, I got to like, yeah. pro- I can't. This guy gets a two million dollar deal, comes to Philadelphia and shits a bit, be- you know, shits a bed. That's a bad look. So he's got pressure right now, which is good. A real yeah. citizen of the world. He wants yeah. to be back in the NBA. He wants to prove himself. Yeah, dude. And you know what I love? So he used to play for the Celtics. Yeah. So you know when the Sixers play the Celtics, he's going to be trying to play his ass off to be like, you gave me up. Yeah, he's going to be walking into the arena, he'll be like, eating that baguette, yeah. smoking a cigarette. Yeah, he'll walk in there. He'll be like, baguette out. Yeah, who was that French guy that like pissed on the plane? That little unk. Uh, you remember that guy? Who's the? F- who? <laughs> I forget. It was like some like actor or something who was like got really drunk on an airplane and just like <laughs> just like pissed Hell on. Yeah. Oh, that would be Yabuselli in the TD Garden. The... Peed in the plane. No, Yabuselli man. He's gonna walk into the Boston Garden, the TD Garden. He's gonna be like Marcus Smart over me. <laughs> He's going to be in there going on as Jimmy Butler. Now, I really like the move. So yeah. his stats, dude, his stats when he was with the Celtics are really bad. But his Olympic stats are good. So wasn't was a, he playing for uh, Barcelona? Who was he playing? Uh, Real was Madrid. Play- yeah. I couldn't find his, his like, EuroLeague stats. Okay. I looked hard. I couldn't find him. Sometimes, somehow, people were finding him. I know he shot about 40% from three in EuroLeague. Not bad. But his Olympic stats in the six games in the Olympics – 14 points a game, three and a half rebounds, one assist, meh. But the things that I liked the most was 52% from the field. Yeah. That'll play. He was efficient. He's 80, 81.5% from the line. He's only 29% from three. Not not great. But then that dunk on LeBron. I mean, he's a epic. stocky, he's a big man to play too. He's a stocky, fit person, you know, good to go that way. He has that drive. He's been wanting to be back in the yeah. NBA, but waiting for that shot. He said, I'm not going to go. If they want me, I'll go, but I'm not going to chase it anymore, which I like. Yeah. That was Gerard Depardieu, was the guy who uh, urinated on a plane. That a sounds like a name that would pee on a plane. <laughs> yeah, that does. Yeah, yeah. yeah Gerard Depardieu. Je Depardieu. You bet I can't do here. Depard than me. Depard pee on the plane. <laughs> yeah. Plus, man, Yabuselli's nickname is the Dancing Bear. That's true. He is, he is like bear, like that's a big burly man, dude. I mean, that might as well be yeah. Embiid's name too. Yeah, that was back in 2011. That was a- Jesus, I thought it was. I God thought it was more damn, oh, you're going way back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, not as far back as me with Corey Detmer and Quincy Carter, yeah. but hey, yeah, but you were referencing a random Depp French RG. man peeing oh, on the plane. French Detmer. man peeing yeah. on the plane. But now I'm excited about the move. I think the Sixers roster is pretty much set. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing these guys play. I don't know how much Yabu Selly plays, but I think because they don't have many power forwards, he's going to get some run. Yeah. I'm ready to clap my hands. Stomp your feet. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. One, four, two, three, four, Delphi. five, sixers. Seventy sixers. <laughs> it's like we got episode 76 next week. We'll sing oh. next week. Yeah. Man. Yeah, I don't think I really have anything else on the sixers. Yeah, not really. That's Mm-mm. about it. Fucking, uh, did you guys see J.D. Vance at the donut shop? Oh, my God. At the donut shop? Terrible. I saw, <laughs> I saw him do a cheese, order a cheesesteak. Well, that that, that's old news. He was at, where Where was this? I it thought was I was at, looking donuts at first because I was like, where? You know, was, what he, happened? He was, I forget, I don't know where he was, but he like goes into this like donut shop with a camera crew. And 
uh, it's clear that the people working there have no idea who he is. Yeah. <laughs> they, don't know what's, they don't know what's going on. It was already really yeah. funny. And he just has no charisma at all. Like, Cause it's like, they always like every people that are running for office always do these little like, you know, campaign stops at like local eateries and like talk everyone up like, Hey, yeah. buddy, how's it going? Blah, blah, blah. And he's just like awkwardly ordering donuts for people. And he's just, and he's, <laughs> He's like, there's one woman behind the counter, and she's like weird out by it. She's like, the I first wanna, person he talks like, to, she's like, do like, not look at me with the camera. Yeah, she's like, I want to be on camera, and you're like, okay, oh, I, that's, I that's see fine this. if you're on camera. And then the only thing that he could think of to say to them was just like, how long have you been working here? Uh, and they're like, uh, like since like January. <laughs> and he's like, oh, what about you? How long? Have you been? Like, he's like, uh, two years or whatever. Like, oh, it's. Great, or whatever. And he has like no other. He's like, how long? Questions. How long has this place been here? They're like, four yeah. Years. He just wants She's to like, know <laughs> the okay. length of time for things. That's all he. Could well, they're weird though. Yeah, and they, then, and then he's just like, yeah. Can you just give us a, uh, I don't know, like twenty donuts? And they're like, what do you want? Just a. Uh, just an assortment, like whatever makes sense. <laughs> he was like, "Let me get some of them like, sprinkle things and yeah. some cinnamon things and whatever." Like, you... I don't know how this works. And then you know, the best too is he was, uh, he he's because because they didn't know who he was, and so he said to the one the one working behind the counter, he's like, "Yeah, I'm uh, running for vice president." And she's just like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> the person, the, the woman so that was like, funny. the woman that was huh. like, "I don't want to be on camera." Yeah. He was like, "All right, well, we can just edit this out. Like, we'll just cut her out." But <laughs> yeah. then continues to talk to the same person the whole yeah. entire time. So and they gives, can't edit it out. Well, yeah. So like his whole conversation is like, I want these. Donuts, you guys will see her in the video. This. And he's like, yeah, we'll, just, we'll figure this out. Then he's like, well, I appreciate that. He's like, you know, I'm running for president. Where was get, this? Something. I'm not sure where it was. I don't know where was it was. Was it around here? Uh, he was here last week. Yeah, but for the cheese state debacle. Some other, uh, I don't know. Some other swing state. But Could have been Pennsylvania. I don't it know. It was but. just the most awkward, uh, bad. It's just He's just not a... A human being. No, he has no riz, yo. There's no riz. And every time <laughs> someone, true. every time someone said like, "Oh, three months or a year," he's like, "Good. Where are you from? How long have you been here?" They're like, oh, "I don't know, like two months." He's like, "Great, good. How long have you been yeah, working here?" It like, like, you know what it looked like? It was like a, it was like a really bad comedian trying to do crowd work. Where he's just like, "Uh, what? Do, uh, where he's just like <laughs> panicking, like, what do you do for a living?" And there's like, yeah. you know, I'm uh. Uh, you know, I work at a donut shop. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. Isn't that funny? You go, whoa, donut yeah. shop. Like, <laughs> it was so awkward. Oh, my God. Yeah. It was so funny. We were about for him it. ordering a cheesesteak. Yeah. And he tried to make the John Kerry joke, but he wasn't funny. Yeah, he can't. Terrible. He's just, a, he's just not no... a... Republicans love putting someone that should never be in front of people in the biggest public seat and just letting it ride. They don't give him any help, no training, nothing like... You got this, man. Get out there. Yeah, they're really bad like, at picking. It's just, they're not good people. They're, people. Yeah, because I, mean, I feel like because like the vice president doesn't really have a huge role in their actual job. They're he's the ca- vibes guy in the locker they, room. He doesn't yeah, be exactly. He's not, like, not, not a starter. He's not yeah. even a backup. He's exactly. the Garrett Stubbs of the White House. Like you're he's supposed just to just be there. <laughs> you're supposed to just be like a guy who can talk to people That's and is personable and gets it. you like some. You know, some charisma points or whatever. And, like, so the Democrats got the Tim Walls guy who's, like, you know, just, like, kind of dad guy, teacher, used to be a football coach. Very He's, like, a, he's every, a football guy, dude. Yeah, he's very, a very, like, you coach, know. Coach, vet, Very relatable. Teacher, teacher, yeah. yeah. Like, whatever, what? whatever you want to say about him politically is, like, whatever. But he's, like, does the job of he's, like, the, you know. Vanilla. Can give you. Just, He's relatable, people likable, whatever. And then the Republicans just always just pick the weirdest, like, <laughs> unlikable person. It was like this fucking guy. And then the last one was Mike Pence, yeah. who was like, who's the dude who was like, I can't, uh, he, he was like, I can't, like, be with uh, a woman without, in, without the being in the presence of my wife. Like, he you calls his that? wife mom. Yeah. And just, he almost wanted to fuck the tractor dealership guy. He's like, yeah. man, you like a John <laughs> Deere. Like, they're like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? It's always just here? the biggest fucking weirdo possible. And then who was before that? I guess before Trump ran, I what guess are it would have been. 2012. 2012 was Paul Ryan. 
Oh, well, I guess it was well, kind he was normal. Of normal. He, was, he was the most he normal. Was normal. He was probably the most normal. That was before politics got real. Well, they tried well, in the weeds. I mean, and, and too then, much like, in the weeds. And then in 08, they took like a big swing with Palin, who I, I can kind of get that. But that's, like, she was far from normal. That was though. more. She but, wasn't normal, but it was like kind of like folksy. Uh, yeah, just, but that like, was pushing the reality lady. TV. Like you know, that was a reality TV was, pick, which yeah, almost came. It with. was like they flew a little too close to the sun there because it was like. Palin was like, okay, she'll be relatable because she's kind of dumb, but she's like, ah, she's too dumb. Yeah. <laughs> she's yeah. she's yeah. too dumb to yeah, be she, relatable she, she, to she the average she, American. Yeah. <laughs> That's how fucking stupid I can see, Alaska, was. I can see Russia from my house. <laughs> yeah, okay, was, we got to twit it back real quick. I mean, yeah. unless we forget Dick Cheney. Yeah. Well, yeah. The OG. Just, the OG, yeah. 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 Well, that was different because it was like, you know, normally the VP doesn't really do anything, but th- in that case, it was like, it was this the is opposite. The guy, this is the guy who's yeah. actually going to be riding the country. <laughs> yeah. And the president was the folksy, rayable yeah. guy. And Dick the, Cheney's shooting people. Yeah. yeah. Which is like, Dick Cheney has his own like, like private kill list. Where to get all these terrorists out of here? Now watch this drive. That, yeah. I'm not going to lie, that's, that's ingrained in my brain. Yeah. It was like, yeah, George W. Bush was playing golf and you know being the guy you want to have a beer with. Meanwhile, Dick Cheney was like plotting <laughs> the uh, the assassination of Pat Tillman and um, you I know, mean that was doing nine eleven. He's the blueprint stuff. of how Trump is trying to like gain all that power. That we'll say is because of his weird shit he's been doing. But Bush, yeah, he's an idiot. I think he's just really stupid. Do we know I who mean, the the surprise guest for the DNC was tonight? Uh, has Bush. that been revealed? What? Yeah, was it Bush? No, I don't know. I I, don't I know. thought. <laughs> I thought that was a good possibility. Honestly, I, I, I did see some rumors. About I feel that like on that's Twitter. where I feel like well, that's where they're at. Where they, they're just trying to like hone in on the like we're gonna get all the the, <laughs> the quote, good Republicans to no, vote but for. It's it. not the good Bush. It's just Jeb Bush. He's like, oh guys, I was like, no, they no, brought please, George no. H. W. back from the grave. Yeah. They, they, they just out, have his mummified corpse. They, 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 they dig him up. Jimmy they Jimmy Carter. They wheel out Jimmy Carter. It looks like everybody. I see Beyonce is trending on Twitter. It was there? I I can't. No I, way. I don't know. There's no shot Beyonce. She's was trending, out there. but maybe she people just... were talking about it was either going to be her or Taylor Swift. Well, it's probably because of the AI. Awesome. I mean, everyone's going to know by the time this comes out, I guess. But I'm is just curious. Tour? No, isn't Taylor Swift touring though? It, well, she does fly wherever she wants. DNC so special. Yeah, guess. she made it to the Super Bowl in time for Japan, That's true. as I said she would. So yeah, that was y'all's bet. You did know. we make a bet? Yeah, you did. You what did lost. I bet? You I said forget. she wasn't going to make it, and I said she was. Did I have to do? What did I, did I you do? Did a shot? A, you did a shot. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it, I don't think they've been revealed yet. My mom. This is some random. They had it's it's eleven o'clock. My mom well, just said I hope Pitbull is the special guest at the DNC with one hundred percent sincerity. This is just someone tweeting. Well, Lou Vega be so good. will unveil Mama Number Six later tonight at the DNC. Damn, Twitter's wild. People are just fucking around. I, I, it, there's nothing to say who it was. Yeah, I don't know. Um, well, I think we. I like to put my bet on then. Uh, Bush. Gritty. I think GW. That'd be a Someone great. Someone put gritty. Yeah, gritty. Gritty uh, ain't going there. No. That would that would be a direct antithesis of his uh, his Antifa vibe, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nope, he can't. He ain't going yeah, he's gonna be gritty's gonna be there outside with the uh, with the Palestinian, the Palestinian yeah. protesters. Yeah. But yeah, what a good run. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess that's about it, right? Okay. No, I think we're good. Yeah, I yeah. think we're good. So that was about to do it for us here tonight, everybody. Thank you for tuning in, listening, there watching. There you go. Please leave us a five star rating and review if you're the podcast. Give us a subscribe on YouTube. Follow on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Send us an email at citywidepod at gmail.com. And from all of us here at the Citywide, good morning, good afternoon. Good night. Peace. Go Birds.